Hello, we're back, all four of us. So, yeah. Um, next up is the connecting to the cluster. Um, and I don't think I'm much needed here, but yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. Let's uh, yeah, let's start. Definitely is needed. <laughs> so, um. Essentially, up until now, we have been on mostly on your machine. You haven't done anything yet, and you can see here this kind of image of the cluster. Of the cluster, and in this step, we are now going onto the login node, which is essentially the interface to the cluster, uh, or one of the several interfaces to the cluster um, that we will be presenting over the course of the uh, over the next uh, of the next few days. Um, we are not yet doing anything on the compute node. We are not uh, compute nodes. We are not yet go doing anything on the actual cluster. We are just accessing it now. So um, I assume that everyone has gotten an account. Uh, if you haven't, follow that uh, follow that link after the course and get yourself an account set up. Um, so after that, we will, first, we will demonstrate um, connecting via, via SSH using a terminal. Terminal uh, can be either uh, the, any terminal, any Linux terminal, or um, Windows PowerShell, or even the Windows command line. All of them work similarly well. Uh, you know, if you could scroll it down a little bit. Yes, just a um, small announcement for you and for everyone else. Um, I just had a glitch on the VPN and internet connection, so um, I'm hopefully not going to drop out for a very long period of periods of time. But um, the, the my connection is a bit unstable right now. Um, but you okay. do need the VPN. Um, oh, the VPN is very useful for connecting to the cluster, so I will keep it on, and I will also show you how to do it without the VPN. But okay, let's go on. So um, if you could open a terminal, since yes. you are on the VPN, um, yes. this becomes a little bit easier. Uh, you essentially only have to type SSH. Let me just quickly clear up um, the screen. And now, so yes. Now, okay. now we're, um, take, we are taking the way uh, that works when you are on the, on the VPN, on the Alto VPN. Uh, in this instance, we can directly say SH, and um, depending if you are on an Alto laptop or an Alto desktop, you can simply say SH triton.alto.fi. Yeah, in this case, it will in fact not work. So my username is actually not displayed here for you. It often will be displayed on in this prompt here, but I have made it simple. If, so I can't if you are on Linux, if you are on Windows, it's if not. If you are on Linux, yes. Um, on Windows, I assume also the who am I command doesn't necessarily work. Uh, I don't actually mm -hmm. know. I am, well, that is my username, but that is not my username at Alba. So this In is my username at Alba. <laughs> well, um, so if you want to be sure, you can essentially add your username with an at and then try to dot alter to the file. Triton.alta.fi. Okay, so yep. SSH is a command um, that, that we're running, and this is the name and the address, address that we are going to, the address of the server that we are connecting to. And I'll press enter. And this will. Okay, what is this? <laughs> yeah, th this this is the first time connecting. Um, all machines do have so-called fingerprints, uh, which uniquely identify them. And uh, if you want, if you s try to connect to a machine, um, you want to make sure that it's actually the correct machine you're talking to, because you will send some credentials over, uh, and and you don't want to be kind of trapped uh, in a in the wrong system. Um, for Triton, the uh, keys can be um can be looked up online on um on the um on the documentations um 
I do you know the do you know the address? Um, I, otherwise, I can just uh, if you can copy them over there. Yes, so I think I found the card page. Yep. But as a try to say fingerprints, and you can you can compare whether the one that is shown to you fits one of the keys here, depending on which key it is. And yes, so in fact, I'm seeing this one, and it's with six one six i and um, it is S S H A two five six. So, and the, yeah. well, this is something you will basically see only once. It's the first time you connect and if it's correct you can type yes it's if essentially you see it again uh, then for some reason the fingerprint has changed and one potential reason is that it's actually not the co not the correct, correct machine machine so um, if, 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 if this shows it's up just changed for some yeah. technical reasons uh, but i would say if it sh shows up again um definitely check yeah if, if it's and the first time one. it is expected and i probably wouldn't care to check, but um, um, yeah. in practically speaking. But if it's not the first time you're connecting, then it's definitely worth checking, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and um, connecting. And essentially, um, this is now connected to the login node. Um, yes. And that, 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 is, that is kind of the, the most, diffi most difficult step to some extent. Um, yeah. That is... The goal of this session, definitely. So, um, if you are not on the VPN, um, you can't directly connect to yes. Triton. So, if yes, you exit this, uh, if you're not connected to the VPN, you can't di directly connect to Triton. Um, you will need a so called proxy jump. Um, essentially, there are a few machines in Alto that allow you to access from outside. And um, those machines then can access Triton. So you um, essentially uh, will have to log in twice. Um, and the, the command is roughly the, or very similar, except that you have a minus J, capital J. And the first part is the, is the same, or the command is the same, SSH. And then I give it a minus J. And then your username at, for example, kosh.alto.fi. Okay, let's go to kosh, kosh .fi. So that's another and, server that I can actually connect to directly without the VPN. And then again, username at triton.alto.fi. Triton. Triton okay. And now again, this is. Now this, this is for kosh. So for kosh.alto.fi, uh, and this is the fingerprint. Do you remember easily where to check if this is correct or not? Um, you can check it on the if you if you go to the same page, uh, there is a link if you're at the seeing bottom. The same as what I'm seeing, um, then it's probably correct. And that is the SHA twenty two fifty six. Yeah, that's the. Okay, that's correct. Yep. So I will type yes and press enter. And by the way, it also tells you permanently added. So from now on, it will never ask again unless the fingerprint has somehow changed. Did, okay. Did, and now, now I have a stupid question to you. Yeah. Did you type your password again? Or um. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Do you have I, a config on uh, Kosh? Yes, I do. Um, okay. Don't worry. Um, yeah. So you you can get, go around a lot of things um, by setting up configurations for for secure shell so for the SSH command, and that works the same on Windows, Linux, or or Mac. Um, essentially, what it uh, what it does is it allows you to set up certain hosts. It allows you to uh, to define poten uh, define um, SSH key files uh, to use to connect instead of password instead of using a password. So essentially, you um, don't have to type your password again, um, and uh, similar things. Uh, we are not going to go through the details of that now. Um, there is 
extensive documentation um, on the, on the documentation pages. Uh, we are now more looking at uh, um, if someone has problems connecting here. We will show so basically, one. Um, if you tried SSH and you were able to connect, everything is working. It it would be probably a good way to spend your time to help others or look through these SSH configuration file and, this and the other advanced parts, SSH um, information advanced SSH that. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it is linked under the SSH documentation uh, configuration file. Yeah, right. OK, yeah. yes. Um, but we will not be going through that. Um, yeah. What we will now do is uh, there are multiple ways to connect to Triton. And um, one quite convenient way is uh, to go over Open On Demand. Um, Open On Demand has a couple of uh, tools that uh, you can use to directly work on Triton. Can I ask, um, does Open On Demand have a parallel to other clusters in Finland? I'm not entirely sure, I think. Actually, maybe I can answer that better. So not that we know of. CSC has a similar thing on some of their clusters. But I guess the moral of the story is read your own site's information yeah. and see what they have. They might have something similar. So um, I guess someone could write that question into the, into the collaborative document, into the notes, and uh, people can answer for their own sites if something similar exists. Um, so should we, or should I go? Um, uh, yeah, if, if you just follow the link, yeah. it will, uh, you have to be logged into right VPN. Uh, the link. I, yeah, I should be on the VPN. And you have to load. I uh, you might need to log in again, but. Um, yeah. I was already logged in and it remembers the session. So, uh, but this is the, the if interface. You, if you've been using the uh, all the other all the things, this is the same mm -hmm. logging interface that you are using in most other other places. Yep. And then you um, will end up on this front on page. This page. Uh, the, the, depending on how large your screen is, the menu will look a little bit different. Um, you can but... make it slightly wider. And uh, you can't, you, yeah. But so it's not a big difference. Um, if you just want to have a terminal, uh, there's the Triton shell access in the pinned apps. Um, this, if you start or if you click on that, okay, it will essentially. <laughs> it's asking for the fingerprint again. This is different than what we had previously, but this is one but... of the correct ones. Yeah, it's it's a different it's a different thing, but it, the the reason it's different is because it's a different protocol. Mm, true. Yeah, this is not. It's ECDSA, and the other was ED two five five nineteen. Okay, okay. Uh, don't explain to me what the difference is, please. I That's can't really at the moment. Um... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's again permanently added it to uh, my known hosts, and here I am on Triton again. And this is interesting, though. This looks somewhat different. Oops. Yeah. This Somehow the rest is missing. I don't ask me why. Well, well don't get confused. Um, don't and get any conf more confused than I am. Why I wanted to uh, mention OOD is because there's all there are also a couple of other um, programs that you can run via OOD, like um, R Studio, MATLAB. Um, Okay, let's close this. So at least it's all available apps here where the pinned apps are. And also you can get applications so, listed here. And all, all these, um, my interactive sessions has the terminal. Yeah. So it's essentially what, what's currently available is Spider uh, for Python, RStudio, um, MATLAB, and uh, Jupyter on Triton again. Um, and if you go to the second page, I think there should be, yeah, VS Code, VS code um, run uh, run on a machine. Um, the advantage of 
this uh, access is that those are running on uh, as an individual job. Uh, so all of these programs are running actually on the cluster and not on the login node. Uh, and since the login node is a shared resource, uh, it running running programs on the login node can lead to problems. And we sometimes have to kill some pro programs that uh, are running there because they are making it very so sluggish to log in. Back to the course page and the image. Yeah, so basically so, yeah. we're all going through the login node. In fact, we're all going into the login node now. So whatever you want to do on the cluster side, you're always going through the login node. And well, that means everybody's there. So if you run something heavy on the login node, you're slowing everyone down. That's not the right way of doing things. How you submit then jobs to the cluster to the actual cluster will be discussed later. Yeah. Um, and the thing with the OOD applications is that, except for the terminal, which is again on the to the login node, they are all running on an actual node, so an actual CP, uh, actual compute um, node. There's at least one person asking or saying that the, it was unclear why we were using OOD. So should we maybe quickly demonstrate running some graphical thing on OOD? Okay, here it is. Um, otherwise, I think we are done with the demonstration, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll just run VS Code. Um, I was kind of clicking through this relatively quickly, though. So here I can ask for a single processor with four gigabytes of memory for hours. And it will run VS code for me on the uh, on the queue, on the which queue, yes. essentially it submits a job to the queue. So you, so your Slurm manager that we we're talking about will start this. As you see, this now going running, pretty quickly. It's, it's already running, and, and now I can it, actually open it up. So build. since I'm used to the VS Code text editor, this is actually quite nice. So this is your folder, your home yeah, this folder. This is my home folder and all of my projects and all of my files on Triton are here. Um, and the same uh, the same works with MATLAB, um, RStudio, or Spider. Yeah. yeah. So this is very convenient for editing files, coding, um, running stuff in RStudio, of course. And, and in MATLAB, you can just could run it or it's easy to run MATLAB and R stuff using R Studio and the MATLAB graphical system. And you can okay. simply delete this and job again. Delete this. Okay. Wait. So that's Wait. essentially the reason for showing OOD. Of course, the other reason is if for some reason running it on the terminal doesn't work. Oops, that was an instance of Jupyter on Triton, but. Um, we, I don't think I opened it while you were looking, so it, I will just not uh, show it. For so, now. Yeah, but that is essentially the, if you, if, well, if you could connect to, uh, through the terminal, you're all set. If you have questions, either ask in the Zoom rooms or ask in the, uh, in so, the notes. Yeah. So if you are seeing this. Yeah. At, if, if you are at the login tree, like then you should be fine. You, you are set up for the for tomorrow or for the next sections. Yeah. So now we have a nice long break to let everyone get connected. And we know that this might be a little bit annoying because for some people you already have this, but some people don't, and some fraction of people have big problems right now. So we can either leave a bunch of people behind or go too fast for, or go too slow for a bunch of people. But luckily we're online. So you can have a 35 minute break. If it's working, you can start previewing the next part, keep asking questions and come back at three o'clock or in, well, on the top of the hour. 
And what we'll do then? So there's two more final examples. So one example of what you can do once you're connected. So it's sort of an intro to this shell thing we see here that lets us do the inputs and outputs. Um, and, th and then we do some demonstrations of running stuff on the cluster, which is basically a sit back and relax. But all of this is really important because it's basically preparing for what comes tomorrow. So we want to give you, you no, know, we, sorry, a bit of an issue here. We, no, you don't need to eat me right now. It's okay. Um, uh oh. He's in attack mode. OK, so basically, we want to give you the introduction to the shell now. So when we talk about the cluster tomorrow, we're just talking about how to run stuff. So this will be partly homework also. So we give an introduction. You have some time to play with it. And hopefully, we can come back and then get to work right away. Um, Yes, so let's. I'll put a notification of the break in the HackMD. And um, uh, yeah, see you later. Keep asking questions. OK, is that all? Yeah, OK, bye for now then. See you at top of the hour.